sound off for Chesterfield. Chesterfield, the first cigarette in America to give you premium quality in both regular and king size brings you drag men. Yes, I got an office. Go like this. Oh, 
You already got it open? Yes, sir, we did. A little bitty screwdriver probably wouldn't have worked anyway. Oh, thank you anyway, sir. Sure thing. Anything else I can do for you? No, sir, it's all right. Not, nothing you need? Nothing at all? Well, not like you got a good remedy for office. 11.01 p.m. The ambulance arrived and took the victim to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. Frank and I followed in our car. This was the tenth in a series of kidnappings in which the suspects obtained cars to use in armed robberies. After beating the victims, they'd locked them in the trunk of the car, and after completion of the robberies, they'd abandoned the automobile with the victims tied and gagged in the trunk. Although to date none of the victims had been killed, we knew it was only a matter of time until the suspects kidnapped somebody who would be incapable of standing the treatment and we'd not only have a robbery but a murder to deal with. The holdups had been going on for a period of six weeks. Frank and I followed up what leads we could, but they brought us nothing. None of the victims could describe the suspects other than to tell us they were male, white Americans, and that one of them spoke with a southern drawl. Eleven seventeen p.m. We arrived at the hospital. The victim had been placed in treatment room number three. Dr. George Hall was treating him. Frank and I went into the room to talk to the doctor. Hi, Joe. Frank. Hi, Danny. How is he? Oh, he's all right. Suffering from shock. He's got a nasty abrasion on his right cheek. I gave him a set of this quiet him down. He'll be okay in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. What happened to him? I have a trunk bandage again. Vicious bunch. You going to release him, Doc? Yeah, I'll be all right in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, you know his name? I want to make out his treatment card. No, he passed out on us before we could get him. Uh, uh, no, he's coming around now. Oh, 
I tried with the guy, no. I just couldn't do it. You said if you heard one of them say, this is a stick-up. Yeah. Those were the words you used to. This is a stick-up. Uh, why don't you go ahead, sir? Well, there was some quiet talking after that. I couldn't tell what was going on, and they drove away again. You have no idea where this gas station was? Uh-oh. I'm sorry, but I was being bounced around that trunk. My head hurt where they hit me. I know they turned some corners, but I couldn't even guess where the station might be. drive for a while and they'd stop. They'd get out of the car, then come back, we'd start to drive again. So finally they parked, they'll wait for them to come back. They didn't. I tried to get the gag off my mouth like he yell for help. Rubbed my face against the spare tire and got loose. Then I yelled, kicked my feet against the trunk. I just about given up when you found me. Not sure I was through. It was getting hard to breathe in there. Uh-huh. I can imagine. No, you can't. Until you've been locked in the trunk. Nobody can imagine that. Terrible. Just terrible. Say, have you called me? That's my wife. Have you called her? No, she really have Oh, she'll be hopping mad. What time is it? It's 11.45. Almost four hours to get a pile of coffee. She'll be raising the roof. Would you call her? Tell her where I am? Yes, yeah, sir. I'll call her. Want to give me the number? Uh, Madison 34656. Uh-huh. Tell her you're calling for Henry. Explain what happened. All right, sir. Right away. Tell her you're a policeman. She'll believe you. Yes. Yeah. I have a couple of questions to have to solve this card. Sure. I hate to ask. Could I have another couple of ones? I'll get it. What do you want to know? I think your full name. Henry J. Hildale. H I L L D A L E. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's figured. How about 
about the car. Did you find anything? I called Lake and Prince. They said the car was driving up to work on it. Couldn't tell if anything was in. Said they called back. Mm -hmm. I've been going over that crime report. Maybe got an idea. Yeah. The way it looks, they picked up the cars in one area, pulled the jobs in the same area. Could be that they live in that area. Makes sense. They've been working inside a 30 square block. Straight down to Hill, 7th to Pico. You got a description on it. Talk to the desk clerks at every hotel and boarding house in the area. Robbery, did you? Yeah, he's here. See you, Jim. Thank you. This side. Oh, yeah, dude. Hmm? You bet. That's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Bergman? Yeah, I just finished the car. It's clean. Not a thing on it. Yeah. 
office. We picked up the flyers and started to canvas the area where we thought the holdup men were living. During the first day, we were able to check out 28 places. Tuesday the 24th, it started to rain again. At 8.30 a.m., we started to canvas the rest of the hotels, rooming houses, and boarding houses in the area. For three days, we talked to the day and the night clerk in each place. We left each of them a flyer with the description of the men and our cars, asking them to call us if anyone answering the description should register at their particular place. For three days, it rained. Saturday, February 28th. Think it'll ever stop, Joe? Yes, there is left. Yeah. Looks like the guys we want to drop off the face of the earth, nobody's seen or heard of them. I never realized there were so many hotels in L.A. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Well, let's try this one. All right. Thank you. 